So, to power these lights in my house, it's nighttime right now, which means my solar panels are doing nothing. So, I'm on the grid at the moment. So, how do I get the electricity to my house? What about, you know, burning that fossil fuel is actually transmitting energy to my house? Because it's not like I am burning the fossil fuel here in my home. Okay, so as we transfer our energy, do we get a perfect and complete conversion? No. So what's happening is we end up doing something at the power plant and then things transfer along the way. And so that's where the efficiency comes in. And so our, our efficiency is that ability of the engine to transform chemical energy to mechanical energy. And so we get this, multi uh, this you know, multiplied effect where with a power plant to a house, we have our overall efficiency. We've got efficiency of the power plant, the boiler, the turbine, the electrical generator, the power transmission, the home electric heater. So there's all sorts of different processes. So when we look at this, all right, our power, power plant does its stuff. And so uh, we end up, you know, burning our fuel, our boiler goes, we get steam, steam turns that turbine, that turbine then goes to the generator, the generator then goes to the power plants, and then um, we cycle everything through to cool the water down and then heat it again. So there's a lot of different processes involved. So we've got the potential energy in our chemical bonds, we have our heat energy, okay, um, after our burner's lit, then we have our gas turbine, Okay, mechanical energy, and then we have our generator, which gives us the electrical energy. And so every step along the way, we can end up getting some transference of that energy to things like heat and other stuff. Um, it's actually interesting. Um, they did a movie years and years ago on the disaster that happened when um, Apollo 13 had an oxygen tank explode when they were up in space. And they ended up having to deal with some power issues. And part of their power issues ended up having to do with like a sequencing of how everything was turned on because of the way all the power was interconnected. So it's really interesting like how you can maximize and manipulate your power. Um, so we can't get complete conversion of one type of energy into another. So our net efficiency is the electrical energy produced divided by the heat from our fuel times 100. And so some of that energy we do transfer into useless heat. The higher the temperature of the steam, though, the more efficient the power plant. Um, if you've ever used one of those like executive toys, you can see some of this in action. So you like pull the ball and then it hits and then it goes through the ball and then it hits and it goes. And so over time though, it slows down because every time a collision between the balls is made, a little bit of the energy of the moving ball at the point of the collision is transferred into heat energy. And so we get a little less, boom, we get a little less, boom, we get a little less, we get a little less, we get a little less until it finally stops. Okay. And so we can look at some typical efficiencies in that power production with everything. And so when I take these percentages and convert them to a decimal, the, so the 55 to 65, we can average to 60%. So I do 0 0.6 times 0 0.9 times 0.75 times 0.95, et cetera. And so um, in this situation, 34% of the energy generated um, is wasted. I mean, 34% of the energy is used and the rest is wasted because um, as each thing gets transferred, we lose some to heat and other stuff. So it's not a perfect system. When we look at different things that we use, some things are more efficient than others. So like an incandescent, incandescent light bulb is only 5% efficient. Most of it is lost to heat. If you've ever used an incandescent light bulb, they do get very, very hot. Um, they had, I don't know if they still exist, because my daughter's too young for these, but when I was growing up, they had things like an Easy Bake Oven or like a Creepy Crawlies thing, or actually those were a little bit after. I think those were more around when I was babysitting kids, because I remember some of the kids I babysat had those. And so like the Easy Bake Oven, <laughs> these light bulbs produce so much heat that the Easy Bake Oven, you made tiny little amounts of like baked goods and you put them in a tray and you put them in your Easy Bake Oven and the stuff was baked by a light bulb. 
Um, they also had this like creepy crawly machine, which was the analogous one for um, people who didn't want to bake. And so you like mix this like stuff together and you poured it into the mold. You baked it with the light bulb, you pulled it out, and then you had these like little rubber toy things. So, um, but yes, you were baking it with a very, very hot incandescent light bulb. Um, fluorescent light bulbs are a little bit better. Cars aren't terribly efficient. Um, power plants, burning fuel for heat. We start to get more efficiency there if we're just trying to get uh, fuel for heat. But when we're trying to power things, not a lot of efficiency in a lot of that stuff. Um, now, when we think about how everything is reacting, uh, when reactions go, they want to go to a state of higher entropy. So not all reactions are spontaneous. They don't always happen um, for no reason. But other times we pour things together and boom, they react because what we're looking for is a higher state of entropy. And so what we need is the sum of the entropy changes must be positive. So our second law of thermodynamics says the entropy, this universe is going to a higher state of entropy. Now, what is entropy? Entropy is disorder. So the universe likes disorder. So why is your house messy? You're just following the second law of thermodynamics. It wants disorder. Because if you think about it, what takes more effort? Just dropping your stuff wherever it falls when you get home or actually taking the time to put everything away? Well, it takes a lot more effort to put everything away. And so the universe does favor a state of higher disorder. So the entropy of the universe must increase. And so we can represent entropy with um, a capital S. So that's that randomness or disorder in a system. And so systems want to get to a state of lowest energy happens to be the state with the highest entropy. So again, you know, lowest energy, doesn't take a lot of energy just to drop stuff, but it takes energy to actually put things away. And so it takes work to decrease that randomness. So S is more positive to indicate greater disorder. And so organized energy is always being transformed into a chaotic motion of heat energy. So again, more disordered, higher the entropy. Um, and so we can think about these and like, let's think about which one would be the higher entropy. So a boiled egg versus a scrambled egg. Which one's going to be more disordered? Well, probably that scrambled egg. I would say the scrambled egg would be more disordered. So I would say the scrambled egg would have the higher entropy. Okay, let's say students sitting in a classroom versus students walking through the halls to the next class. Which one's more disordered? The students walking through the halls. A lot more chaos as everybody's walking around. So that's going to be the highest entropy. Water vapor versus an ice cube. So a gas that's moving around and being all chaotic or an ice cube that's a solid thing that's just sitting there. Obviously the water vapor. Okay, and then photosynthesis versus combustion. So this has to do with basically like where are you getting more molecu molecular disorder? And so we're gonna get a little bit more molecular disorder in our photosynthesis, okay? And so again, entropy, just disorder. So things wanna go to a state of higher chaos and more disorder. <laughs> and so we get this chemical spontaneity. Um, what's interesting is most spontaneous reactions are exothermic. Um, there's not as many spontaneous reactions that are endothermic. Usually you have to, you know, put that heat in there. But this particular reaction uh, is spontaneous. It What's so funny is it's so endothermic that if you put water like on the um, the wooden board and you put the beaker on top of it and you run this reaction, it gets so cold that it freezes the water and it freezes the board to the bottom of the beaker. Um, but basically, you end up with more disorder based on the products that are formed. And so this one, even though it is endothermic, it's drawing in from the uh, uh, surroundings. It is actually spontaneous.